In this video, I will share everything there is to know about each new weapon and tell you which I think are best for tackling the Ashlands with my personal top three. Let's dive in. In total, six new melee weapons, four new staves, two bombs, and a new bow and crossbow can now be part of your arsenal. However, where this update truly shines is the new ability to add one of three elemental powers to your weapons with the blue eye light, green jade, and red bloodstone. The blue eye light adds 10 passive lightning damage to your weapon of choice, but also delivers a 25% chance with every hit to trigger chain lightning, crushing large groups of enemies. The green jade adds both 10 passive poison damage over time and a 20% chance to root your enemies, completely immobilizing them for a short period, allowing you time to get in some free hits. And the red bloodstone adds 0.2% additional damage for each health you are missing. Important to emphasize here that damage is only increased with missing health. Keeping your health low by not eating food will not increase the damage output. These effects will be the same no matter which weapon type you infuse with the gem. But keep in mind that only Ashland's weapons can take advantage of the gemstones with five of the melee weapons and both the bow and crossbow. Weapons from previous biomes, the four staves, as well as the special flame sword, Deer and Wind, cannot be upgraded with gems. More on this badass fire sword a little later. I will share which of these powers I think is best later in the video, but first, we must gather these valuable gemstones by hopping into your dedicated hosted server provided by Dathost. Dathost is today's video sponsor and is the best way for you and your friends to dive into the Ashlands head first with their fast and reliable dedicated servers. They have a server for your every need with 30 locations worldwide and allow you to start a fresh new world, bring in your existing world and easily swap between them with clear and simple instructions. It is the service I trust for our community server, having never had an issue in the months we have been using it. There is no better way to conquer the Ashlands with your best buds than with a shared server with that host. Get 30% off your first month of service by hitting my link in the description or pinned comment below. Thanks to Dathost for sponsoring this video. The three gemstones can be found within fortresses across the biome. Inside both exterior and secondary walls, there will be charred chests, with each having a random chance to spawn any one of the three gems. To get the full potential out of your weapons and ultimately augment them with the gem stones, you'll need to craft both the Black Forge upgrades and the metal and gem cutters, bringing your Black Forge to level 5. With the Black Forge upgraded, we can now enhance our weapons, which I will demonstrate by converting the first new weapon in the single handed sword, Need Hog, to its Bloodstone alternate in the Need Hog the Bleeding. To do so, first craft the base weapon, which will be combined with flame metal and the red bloodstone, consuming the base Needhog for the Needhog the Bleeding. It's important to note here that regardless of the upgrade level of your base level Needhog, you will always get the quality level 1 of the enhanced version of it when combined with the gemstone. For this reason, if looking to craft any of the enhanced versions of these weapons, save your resources and hold off on upgrading the base weapon. With the new mechanics out of the way, let's take a look at each of these weapons in action, starting with the Needhog. Nothing out of the ordinary here with the expected standard single-handed sword mechanics mirroring that of the one-handed swords before it, but with the added benefit of the gemstones should you choose one of those versions. On screen are the full stats, crafting and upgrade costs for both the base Needhog, as well as its alternate gem versions in the Bleeding, Thundering, and Primal for you to digest. I will include a table like this for each of the weapon classes as we go through them, as well as a full summary at the end. Second is the Slayer, being the second greatsword introduced to the game behind the Mistlands Krom, which its attack patterns it shares. While the Brutal, Scourging, and Primal all look badass, just like its Mistlands counterpart, the Greatsword falls short in its limited attack speed, as did the Krom before it. However, it does stand out, dealing significant damage and having higher block armor and force compared to most other melee weapons. Third is the Flame Metal Mace and its transformed versions in the Bludgeon, Storm, and Clausen. Like Maces before it, this weapon stands out for its vicious blunt damage, large knockback capabilities, especially from its secondary uppercut attack, combined with its quick attack speed, making for an excellent option for melee enjoyers. Fourth introduces a brand new weapon class in dual wielded axes in the Berserk Gear and its augmented variations in the Bleeding, Thundering, and Primal. In my opinion, this weapon is the spiritual dagger for this biome, providing a quick three attack combo with the third attack hitting with both axes combined in addition to a lunging secondary attack mimicking that of daggers. These things are awesome, and you just might see this weapon in my recommendations later in the video. The final new melee weapon introduced outside of the Deer and Wind is the new Split Near Spear. While spears are far from my favorite weapon class in Valheim, the Bleeding, Storming, and Primal versions are nothing to scoff at. These spears deliver effective range and rapid attack speed as those before them, combined with the signature secondary attack with the spear toss. 
However, like Spears before them, they do not have a 3 attack combo, and therefore miss out on the double damage yielded by the third hit, unlike most other melee weapons. That said, their rapid jabbing attack speed means a higher chance of proccing the chain lightning or root power from the storming and primal versions of this weapon. There might be some potential here. As for ranged weapons, first is the Ash Bow converted to the Blood, Storm, and Root classifications and is my personal favorite ranged weapon acting with increased attack speed compared to crossbows. One thing you might miss with this bow is that once upgraded to a quality of 2, the Ash Bow also receives a small amount of spirit damage in addition to the pierce. The gemstone versions of this bow will also keep the spirit damage. Speaking of crossbows, next is the Ripper being converted to the Wound, Storm, and Root versions. While slower than the Ash Bow, the crossbow delivers significant damage but is slowed down by a short reload time between shots. Be careful while reloading as dodging or sprinting will reset the reload animation. Likewise, unequipping the crossbow also unloads the weapon. On the bright side, unlike the bow, you don't consume stamina with each shot and it is effectively hit scan. Use this to snipe enemies at a long distance. Both bows and crossbows also did receive new ammunition in the charred arrow and bolt respectively before reviewing the two new bombs and incredible stabs. As promised, here's the full list of melee and ranged weapons with their stats, crafting, and upgrade costs for you to enjoy. Keep in mind while reviewing this list that the max achievable level for your Black Forge is only 5, and similarly, the Galder Table's current max is 4, limiting the power we can get from the stabs as we will cover shortly. We will have to wait to the deep north to witness the full power of these weapons. Check out my link in the video description for the full Google Doc if you prefer. The first bomb in Basalt are useless in combat, but allow us to reach Flay Metal in Lava Pits. When thrown atop lava, they will harden, creating a platform to navigate to the Flay Metal Columns safely. Second are the Smoke Bombs, like the Basalt, have no purpose in combat, but can be used to extinguish fires when your wooden home inevitably catches fire in the fiery biome. And perhaps most importantly are the Fantastic Four new stabs. Unlike the melee and ranged weapons, stabs are crafted at the Galder Table. To get the most out of the stabs, upgrade your Galder Table to level 4 with the Feathery Wreath. However, unlike the previous weapons, the stabs cannot be augmented with gemstones, but considering their powerful and unique abilities, you won't have need to. Starting with the Staff of Fracturing, this staff uses elemental magic to act like a grenade launcher, but the grenade, after a slight delay, fractures into smaller explosives. Weirdly, I have found it does not do the type of AoE damage you would expect, and I would certainly recommend its use for single target damage. In my opinion, this is the least exciting of the new staves, but could be powerful if fire damage is your preferred choice. Second is the Staff of the Wild, which allows you to do your best Elder impression and summon roots just like the Black Forest boss. Like the Elder, the summoned roots are stationary and will attack any within their reach, dealing blunt and poison damage, but also have a small chance to root enemies similar to that of the Jade Gemstone power. There is no limit on the number of roots you can summon, provided you have the available Iter. The roots have no health bar, cannot be destroyed, but will despawn after roughly 20 seconds. Before my favorite staff of this patch, we have our third staff in the Dunder. This staff has been affectionately referred to by the Valheim developers as a magic shotgun excelling in close quarters combat. This staff uses elemental magic to fire short range bursts of lightning. After every shot, however, the staff effectively has a cooldown or iter consuming reload. Remember, rolling or sprinting does interrupt the reload while still consuming the 44 iter. Fortunately, like a shotgun, this weapon has a ton of kick, knocking both you and your enemy backwards, providing you space and time to recharge the staff. And the fourth and personal favorite of mine is the Troll Staff. This is the only blood magic staff added in this update and therefore requires both health and iter to use, but like its name suggests, allows you to summon up to two fire trolls to fight alongside you. And just look at that summon animation, incredible! The summon animation also does massive damage. Consider using it to destroy groups of enemies or assist in destroying resource nodes like the massive rocks in the plains to accelerate your resource gathering. Apart from that, these trolls are beasts in combat and will attract a ton of attention. However, do tread carefully as these trolls are allied to nobody but each other and once done with your foes, will seek you out next. And lastly, before we get into my recommendations, check out my full table of stab stats and crafting costs as I prepare to show you how to uncover the elusive Dirnwen sword. This sword requires three sword fragments to be gathered of which only one of each exists per server. For that reason, you will have to fight your server buddies for the right to craft this as there can only be one. To find the three fragment locations, you will have to dive into putrid holes and find the Vegfrasir rune stones of which each will mark one of three mysterious locations on your map. At each location, you will find a unique stone structure protected by two star versions of the Chard and a spawner. After defeating the Chard, 
Two of the locations will have altars with a sword fragment for claiming, while the third will require you to dig, finding the entrance to Lord Rito's lair, this biome's mini boss. Defeat him for the third and final sword fragment, enabling you to craft this weapon. This sword looks badass both in your hand and on your back, but unfortunately, despite its higher damage than the Needhog, it has trouble competing with the powerful perks added by augmenting the other melee weapons with gemstones. That said, if fire is your thing, don't hesitate to give it a shot. And with all the Ashland's weapons covered, it's time I share my absolute top three. But first, to justify my choices, I must rank the three gemstone powers from three to one. Coming in third place is the Bloodstone, as you need to lose 50 health just to equal the 10 elemental damage provided by the Jade and Eyelight Gems by default. Further, the Bloodstone doesn't deliver an additional perk like the Immobilize and Chain Lightning, and for that reason you won't see any blood weapons on my list. Perhaps if this weapon had lifesteal, like many had speculated before the Ashlands launch, it could be viable. Second place lands with the Jade Root ability as the Immobilize Chance can sometimes be the difference between life and death, especially when dealing with large menacing enemies like the Morgan or Valkyrie. However, what hurts the Jade Gem is the additional damage being poisoned. With many of the enemies in the Ashlands being undead, they are either resistant or immune altogether to poison damage, hurting the overall impact of jade-infused weapons. And in first place, without a doubt, the most powerful gemstone is the Iolite, with the added lightning damage being excellent in the Ashlands, with zero creatures having resistance to it, plus it excels against the Mighty Morgan. Furthermore, the chance of chain lightning can save your life when swarmed by enemies. And with that understood, these are my top three Ashlands weapons, starting with number three, the Root Fang. When it comes to choosing bows or crossbows, it's an easy choice for me with the increased fire rate of the bow, which is only magnified with the addition of the immobilizing effect chance by the infused jade gemstone. Ranged weapons thrive when they can keep their targets at a distance where the immobilizing effect certainly stands out. The more hits you get, the more chances you have for the root effect to proc, which furthers my case in favor of the ash over the ripper. The biggest downside here is the damage dealt being poison and pierce. Many of the Ashland's enemies are skeletal and or undead, leaving them either resistant or immune to the damage dealt by this bow. Number two is the Stormstart Mace. The mace stands out for its quick attack speed and significant knockback for a one-handed weapon. Furthermore, due to the rapid attack speed, you can expect an increased chance of proccing the Chain Lightning, crushing the Undead Horde. Plus, unlike my first choice, this weapon is single-handed, allowing you to pair a shield with it for added protection. And before revealing my top three weapons for this biome, I want to share two honorable mentions for the spellcasters out there, with the Troll Staff and Staff of the Wild. In general, the new staffs added in the Ashlands update are underwhelming, considering most of the time I prefer the Mistland staffs over the new ones introduced. That said, it's hard to compete with having one or even two fire trolls fighting alongside you. Plus, the ability to absolutely crush giant structures never gets old. Second, while the Staff of the Wild was initially underwhelming in the public test branch, feedback was heard by the community and this staff got a huge buff. Now, its massive damage and awesome chance to root your enemies is a fantastic crowd control tool in any mage's toolkit. And without further ado, my absolute number one choice of Ashland's weapons is without a doubt the Thundering Berserkir Axes. Like the mace before it, the axes excel in both attack speed, but unlike the mace, do slash damage and have reduced knockback. The reduced knockback is preferable for me as I like to keep my enemies close to take them down quickly. The biggest downside of these axes is that they are dual handed, not allowing for the addition of a shield for added protection. That said, my preference is to dodge rather than block, and for that reason, missing the shield is no big deal for me. The axes that attack speed and reliable slash and lightning damage makes it stand out as a single best choice on your Ashen quest. And if you want to know more about how damage and weapons work in Valheim, I've got you covered with this video right here. And of course, do not forget to get 30% off your first month of server hosting with that host, link in the description.